Another question we can answer using using our derivative is where is a function increasing versus decreasing? Where is it going up versus down? And to do that, first, first we, we need a clear definition of what increasing versus decreasing means. All right, so let's see. A function is increasing on an interval if for every pair of numbers, x1 and x2, where we, we have this order. Okay, first, they're, they're both between A and B, all right, and one of them is greater than the other. So I've got x1 here and x2 here. Then we have this inequality. So f of x1, let's say that's here, right, f of x1 is less than f of x2. So I don't know where f of x2 is exactly, but I know it's higher up. And you see, yeah, that's what we mean, right, by increasing. As, you, as the x numbers go bigger, the y numbers get bigger. And our definition of decreasing is practically the same thing. It's just the inequality is the other way around. All right, so now to be decreasing f of x1 has to be greater than f of x2. And yeah, that's that's intuitively what we mean, right? Increasing the numbers are going up, decreasing the numbers are going down. Okay. So how can we how can we use our derivative to answer these questions now? Um, well, here's our rule, right? It's in, test for increasing versus decreasing. Suppose that um, f is continuous on an interval and that it's also differentiable on on the open interval. We, we, we're going to loosen it up a little bit, right? It doesn't have to be the, the closed interval here. Then if the derivative is greater than zero at every point on that open interval, then the function is increasing. Similarly, if the derivative is negative at every point on that interval, then the function is decreasing. So intuitively, the, this makes sense, right? If we're, if we're thinking about the derivative as the rate of change, right? If the rate of change is negative, we've always interpreted that as the function is going down, right? And, and if the rate of change is positive, we interpret that as the, the values of the function are going up. Okay. And that's kind of an informal way to think about this, but let, let's see if we can actually prove this, All right? I'm going to do the increasing one, then I'll, I'll leave the decreasing one for practice. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say let x1 and x2 be an element of that interval and Let x1 be the smaller of the two. Okay. Now, to do this, I'm going to need to pull out that mean value theorem that we talked about. All right. The mean value theorem says if, if I look at this ratio, f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, then there exists some number c on that interval such that this is equal to f prime of c. All right, but now now let's see. Um, let's move, let's, let's get rid of the denominator. Multiply through by x2 minus x1. All right, well, they cancel here on the left. So the left side becomes f of x2 minus f of x1. And this equals f prime of c times x2 minus x1. Okay, but now wait, look. x2, remember, is greater than x1. Right? That means that this expression here is positive. 
we're trying to show increasing here, right? So this is, I'm assuming that the derivative is greater than zero, which means this is positive. Okay, well, excellent. The product of two positive numbers is a positive number. So these two multiplied together have to be greater than zero. And I'm, I'm going to say strictly greater than zero because um, x2 is strictly greater than x1. They're not equal. So this, dis, this x2 minus x1 is not zero. And over here, our assumption about f prime is that it's strictly greater than zero. So since neither of those numbers are zero, their product can't be zero. Okay, but now wait, look, let, let, let me write just the, the first part as f of x2 minus f of x1. This has to be greater than zero. Move that number over. f of x2 is greater than f of x1. But that's what it means to be increasing. Right, that's what our, de our definition says. Our definition says if x2 is greater than x1, then f of x2 is greater than f of x1. So that's what I need to show. Right, that's, how, um, that's the increasing case. Right, I'll, I'll let you try doing the, the decreasing case on your own and see what you come up with. All right, so how can we use this thing? I've got this function here, this polynomial, and I want to know where is it increasing versus decreasing. Well, here, here's how we're going to do this. Right? I need to know uh, first what the derivative is. f prime of x is 2, uh, excuse me, power rule here, right? 4x plus 4. And what I need to know is where is this greater than 0 and where is it less than zero? Well, here's how we're going to do this. The places that it changes from the places that it potentially changes from positive to negative are the places where it equals zero. All right, so I'm going to find those first. I'm going to set f prime equal to zero and solve this. 4x equals minus 4 x equals minus 1. So that's where f prime is equal to 0. Right? So let me draw a number line here. And I'm going to put that transition point on here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number on either side. I'll pick x equals 0 on the right and x equals negative 2 on the left. Evaluate the derivative at both of those points. See what the sign is. F prime of negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 plus 4. That's negative 4, which is less than 0. So the function is decreasing on this interval. And if I test 0, F prime of 0 is 4 times 0 plus 4, which is positive 4. That's greater than zero. So on this side, the function is increasing. So I'm going to answer the, we've got to answer the question. F of X is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative one and decreasing on negative 1 up to plus infinity. There's the answer to the question. All right, so let's try another one. Where is the function f of x equals tangent of x increasing versus decreasing? Well, use our same rule. f prime of x equals secant squared x. Okay, and I'm going to stop right here. Right, I'm going to stop right here. Um, remember, the, the question is, where is this positive? Where is this negative? Right? Well, a number squared is always positive. So I know that this expression is greater than 
zero everywhere, always. Right? It's always greater than zero. Now, here, however, is where you got to be a little careful. I can't say it's it's increasing everywhere. Function isn't defined everywhere, right? The tangent isn't defined everywhere. Um, the tangent is undefined at x equals pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 2, anywhere the cosine is 0, right? Um, 5 pi over 2, and so on. So how, how do we generalize this? Well, it's, it's an even number times pi over 2. So I would say 2k plus 1 pi over 2, where k is an integer. Okay, so what's the answer to my question? I would say f of x is increasing everywhere except at 2k plus 1 pi over 2, where k is an integer. So we're going to use the same approach here, but it's going to be a little trickier. There's going to be kind of a, an unusual factoring step that we've seen before. So well, let's uh, start with the derivative part. To find f prime, we're going to use the product rule. So I'm going to do x to the one-third times the derivative of x squared minus 4 plus x squared minus 4 times the derivative of x to the one-third. All right, derivative of x squared minus 4, that's just 2x. So this is 2x times x to the one-third plus the derivative of x to the one-third is one-third x to the negative two-thirds times x squared minus 4. Now here comes uh, that, that kind of unusual factoring step. I'm going to pull an x to the negative two-thirds out of here. What will be left from this first term is 2x times x. So remember, we, we've seen this before. I know it's a little unusual. Try factoring back, distributing that back in, and you'll see what happens. x to the negative two-thirds times x to the first, where you add the exponents together, and negative two-thirds plus one is the original one-third. So that, that works. I can factor that away. Plus one-third. Now that x to the negative two-thirds is out front now. x squared minus four. Okay, just to make things easier, I'm also going to factor out that one-third. So this will be one over three x to the two-thirds times, this is 2x squared here, right? But I pulled out that 3, uh, that 1 third, so this will become 6x squared plus x squared minus 4. Now we're almost there. This is 7x squared minus 4 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Excellent. That's my derivative. Now that I've got the derivative, my next step, I need the critical points. Right, the critical values. Well, to find those, I have to do two things. First, I need to know where this is equal to zero. All right, well, that is the new, the a fraction is equal to zero when its numerator is equal to zero. So if I solve this, this is 7x squared equals 4, x squared equals 4 sevenths, x equals plus or minus 2 over the square root of 7. And I also need to know where the, the derivative is undefined. All right, well, that happens where the denominator equals 0. And let's see, divide by 0, x to the 2 thirds equals 0. Raise both sides to the 3 halves power. 
2 thirds times 3 halves, that's 1, so the left side is just x. And the right side, 0 to the 3 halves power is 0. Okay, now you notice I, I didn't make any effort to rationalize that square root of 7. I could have. If you did, that's fine. I, but you don't, you don't really need to because my next step is going to be to go to go to a number line. And I'm going to put these numbers on there. I'm going to have 0. I'm going to have 2 divided by the square root of 7. And I'm going to have minus 2 divided by the square root of 7. And now I need to pick test points. But look. One way or another, I'm going to have to turn that 2 divided by the square root of 7 uh, into a decimal. Right? That, that's going to be the easiest way to, to find a number that's, that's between um, 0 and 2 times the square root of 7 and 0 minus 2 times the square root of 7. So my calculator tells me that 2 divided by the square root of 7 is 0 0.756. So let me put that down here, 0 0.756 and negative 0 0.756. Good, now it's easy. Right now I'm going to test negative 1 half plus 1 half, and I'm going to test negative 1 and 1. All right, so remember how we do that. I'm going to go back to the derivative. Be sure, remember, it's always the tricky little part. Don't go back to the function. I need to know what f prime of 1 is. Yes, well, this is 7 times 1 squared minus 4 over 3 times 1 to the 2 thirds, which is, let's see, this is 7 minus 4, that's 3 over 3 times 1 to the 2 thirds, which is going to be 1. More important is greater than 0. That's what I really needed to know. The derivative is greater than 0. It's positive on this interval, which means the function is increasing on that interval. All right, now I, I, want, you to, I want you to take a look at something here. All right, how about f prime of negative 1? All right, what's that going to be? Well, look, look back at the original, the, at the derivative. There's an x squared and an x squared the cube root, right? There, there's an x, both of the x's are being squared. Which means when I put 1 and minus 1 in, I get the same thing. right? So you can, you can work this out. Do the steps if you need to. But this is also going to equal 1, which is greater than 0. So the function is also increasing here. All right, so how about 1 half? Well, look, remember, all I care about is the sign. right? Is this positive or negative? So like if I put 1 half in here f of 1 half is 7 to the 1 half squared minus 4 over. Now think about this denominator. I'm going to put 1 half in there. I'm going to take the cube root and then I'm going to square it. When I do that, I'm going to get a positive number. When I multiply that by 3, it's still a positive number. All right now, how, how about the top? Um, 1 half squared is... Uh, 1 fourth times 7 is 7 fourths. That's less than 4. Get your calculator out if you, if you have to. It's uh, 1.75. So 7 fourths minus 4 is negative. So this is a negative number divided by a positive number, which is less than 0. And that's all I needed to know. Right? The, the first derivative is negative on this interval. So the function is decreasing there. All right, and if I put negative one half in there, I'm going to get the same thing. Remember, this is just like one versus negative one. When I put, when I square the one, negative one half, I get one fourth in the numerator and the denominator. So it's also going to be negative here. And now I can answer the question. The function is increasing from negative infinity up to negative two divided by the square root of seven union. 2 divided by the square root of 7 up to infinity and is decreasing. And now here we have to be a little careful. I don't want to include 0. I don't want to include that, that critical point. This is going to be negative 2 divided by the square root of 7 up to 0 
union zero up to two divided by the square root of seven. If you wanted to rationalize those, that's fine. It would be two times the square root of seven over seven, right? Um, but either way, those are the two intervals. And, and a point I really want to emphasize here, whenever we're doing this increasing versus decreasing, we always use parentheses. You're never going to include the actual critical point. Okay, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing at that point where, if you will, it stops and turn around, turns around, right? Goes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. That's really what's happening there, right? At, at those critical values that, that we've tested. Um, and we're going to talk more about that. When, when we talk about uh, curve sketching in a later section, we're going to get into that in um, a lot more detail. All right, so let me let me give you one. Right, take a look at this. See if you can work this. See what you come up with. Okay, so first I need the derivative. F prime of x is let's see the derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus the derivative of e to the minus x is e to the minus x times the derivative of minus x. That's the chain rule. So this is e to the x minus e to the minus x. And I need to know when does this equal 0. All right, well, let's see. Um, first, let, let's fix that negative exponent. Let's make this e to the x minus 1 over e to the x. When does that equal 0? All right, the next thing I'm going to do, really what you should do, okay? Really, you should find a common denominator. Set the numerator equal to zero, the denominator equal to zero, just like we did on the last one. Solve for those. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the x. Now, normally that's something you do not want to do. You do not want to multiply both sides of an equation by something with a variable in it. You don't want to eliminate that factor from the denominator because that has the potential to eliminate solutions. Here, and I want to, want to talk about this because it's, it's important to know these these technicalities. Here, it's okay to do that. I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the x. Now, why is it okay? It's okay because e to the x is never equal to zero. So I'm not potentially losing an answer by doing this. All right, so when I do this, this part will become e to the 2x, and this part will become minus 1, still equals zero. Let's move that 1 over. e to the 2x equals 1. Uh, take the logarithm of both sides. The log of e to the 2x equals the log of 1. The log of e to the 2x is just 2x. And the log of 1 is 0. So x is equal to 0. We have one critical value. So let's test on both sides. Um, just pick easy numbers, right? Don't don't make this hard on yourself. I'm going to pick one and negative one. All right. So um, where did my derivative go? Right, it's right here. F prime of x equals this. So I put negative one in there. F prime of e to the whoops e to the negative first. F prime of negative one is e to the negative first minus e to the negative negative first. So this is 1 over e minus e. Okay, e is 2. 2.718 something. So 1 over that is somewhere pretty close to 1 third. e on the other hand is, like I said, 2.7. So this is 1 third or something close to it minus 2.718 something. This is a negative number, which means on this interval, the function is decreasing, right? I, I like to talk about these things that, that save me going to the calculator. If it's, if it's a little unclear to you, get your calculator, I'll plug the number and get the exact value, right? You're going to get the same result either way. All right, so now let's try the other one. F prime of 1 is e to the first minus e 
to the negative first. We notice that's, well, let me go a little further. This is e minus 1 over e. It's just this reversed. Right? It's that multiplied by negative 1. So this is going to be positive. It's increasing here. So the function is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 0 and increasing on the interval 0 up to plus infinity. So what's next? The, the, what, where we're going next, we're going to take this idea of increasing and decreasing and turn it into a test that we can use to locate those local maximum and minimum values that we kind of talked about briefly uh, back when, back a couple lectures back when we were talking about finding uh, the extrema of a function.